welcome to ETCM the emergency medicine channel. Uh, today we will be discussing a case of uh, pneumonia that is presented to our ER. A 20 year old male uh, presented to ER with a history of uh, a fever, loose stools and breathlessness uh, over the last uh, 7 days. So he was referred from another hospital. Uh, so, initial uh, 10 second assessment, a uh, patient was conscious oriented and uh, speaking relevantly uh, in full sentences, uh, but he was a little tachypneic. Uh, the respiratory rate was like around 30 per minute. So, uh, he was triaged to the uh, red area and uh, he was uh, transported with the oxygen uh, with face mask. And uh, like uh, we triaged him to red area and uh, his uh, primary assessment showed airway was patent. There was uh, no secretions, uh, like uh, no uh, signs of any airway compromise, no gurgling of uh, uh, sound or no hoarseness of voice, anything. And uh, so we went to the breathing part. Patient uh, like had adequate chest excursions bilaterally and was uh, maintaining a saturation of uh, 86 percentage in room air. And uh, like he was uh, start al already on supplemental oxygen. So we we continued the supplemental, uh, supplemental oxygen uh, like initially it was like on face mask uh, uh, 5 liter but uh, on reassessment we could reduce it taper it so uh, later with a 3 liter O2 with nasal prongs he was how do you reduce that oxygen uh, sir uh, basically we can start it on a higher uh, level and if the uh, patient is maintaining saturation and with the uh, like ABG values and all, if oxygenation is adequate, we can slowly taper it down. Maintaining saturation uh, alone, you can decide whether the no, if the patient's tachypnea is there, we have to supplement him more. But if tachypnea is most important thing because even patient is having lower saturation levels, if they become tachypneic, the saturation can elevate. Okay, so that increases the breathing. Effort. Uh, effort of the patient. So, slowly patient will deteriorate. Uh, so, if the patient is tachypneic, better oxygen. to continue the oxygen even if the saturation, everything is normal. Uh, but this patient like on further reassessment, he was settling down. Oh. So, finally like later we could uh, reduce it uh, to 3 liter. Initially it was on face mask, okay. mask 5 liters. And uh, then uh, like air entry was by... liters means you use face nasal, mask. Nasal forms. Uh, the uh, air entry was bilaterally equal and uh, bilateral scattered crepitations were present. Uh, there was no wheeze. Uh, then uh, coming to circulation uh, part, a patient uh, had a blood pressure of 100 by 60 millimeters of mercury and a patient had a pulse rate of 128 uh, uh, beats per minute and it was uh, regular in rhythm and uh, peripheral pulses were also What do you think about the pulse rate in this uh, patient? Sir, so one is he is tachypneic, respiratory distress is there, then some hypoxia is there. Then later, uh, when we check his temperature, he had fever of 100.6 degree Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, like transportation, all this uh, add, to, add on to anxiety and distress. Even then, uh, 126 is very high. Uh, sir, then, uh, two, uh, two, two, 2 degrees Celsius maximum it increased to 100. Uh, so, then, another uh, uh, 10 respiratory, it, it may add another 10. Uh, then Even then it is high. Other thing is like he is coming with breathlessness like a suspected pneumonia. So can be like a, uh, associated uh, maybe a viral pneumonia causing viral uh, myocarditis or even other uh, sepsis related myocarditis. Uh, uh, or don't think hypovolemia. Uh, right now sir the blood pressure was uh, 160 like maybe dehydration hypovolemia can also be there sir. Uh, maybe because of that also. Uh, so these are commonly seen causes. Okay. Uh, then, uh, so, uh, like, uh, pulse rate was 128, uh, BP was 160, uh, but uh, peripheral pulses were pal well felt. Uh, then we went to uh, disability part. Patient was uh, having GCS of 15 on 15 uh, and uh, like uh, exposure temperature was uh, 100.6 degree Fahrenheit and had a GRBS of 95 milligram per deciliter. Uh, so, uh, like... Yeah, we had uh, say, uh, secured uh, two uh, large bore IV cannulas and uh, the patient uh, we had started him on uh, injection paracetamol. Uh, one gram IV was uh, given. And is hurry to start paracetamol? Uh, sir, uh, is, it, uh, is it an emergency drug? No, patient is having fever and uh, like. What are you supposed to do in this patient? Paracetamol is not. Heart rate emergency. should come down. Already, sir, oxygenation part we have taken care of. Next thing, the uh, tachycardia is there. So, we have to bring it down. So, uh, we have to reduce the causes leading to tachycardia. Any infection, what is the first priority? Any infection who is having low BP, 
tachycardia fluid fluid is the first priority so you should know whether fluid overloaded or not you have not assessed the fluid overloaded situation here but uh, neither patient does not have any fluid overloaded situation so okay. it is always better to start fluid okay then you can titrate down so fluid is the first thing we should start in er if the patient is having hypotension tachycardia all these things okay paracetamol is not a emergency okay. drug we should not we should not waste our time for paracetamol it can be given mm. okay i am not telling it should not be given uh, so uh, as adjuncts to the uh, primary assessment uh, we had done a uh, bedside uh, uh, ultrasound so a uh, patient uh, like basically to assess the fluid status so the ivc was around 0.7 to 0.8 cm with more than 70 uh, more than 50 percentage collapsibility oh. uh, so uh, like uh, th- for this patient uh, like uh, we had given started him on fluid so uh, like around uh, 1 liter of fluid was uh, initially given uh, and uh, with that actually his bp had come up to 120 by 80 uh, heart rate had come down to 106 but not below that sir and along with temperature also like we had given paracetamol temperature also had come down from that what do you understood uh, it is like fluid one is patient is fluid responsive the uh, important thing is fluid he is fluid responsive so we it's our duty to correct maximum fluid deficit, uh, fluid deficit in this patient uh, so what are the clinical tests you usually do to check for volume responsiveness uh, so one is uh, passive leg raising test uh, then uh, like uh, like we can check for the uh, ultrasound like ivc collapsibility index can be checked for uh, this is like in easy bedside test other like dynamic tests are, tests are all there but we uh, in a year uh, we see here we can go for these things sir. and uh, like our uh, whether like urine output all those things uh, act as markers for the perfusion which also gives idea of uh, the hydration status uh, so uh, this patient then uh, like uh, we had taken an abg so uh, abg was showing a ph of 7.436 pco2 29.9 po2 of 76.2 and so2 of 95.3 and a bicarb of uh, 20 uh, and patient lactate was 1.5 what do you, how do you comment about this? Uh, so basically, this is uh, with the oxygen uh, of uh, 5 liter. So, PaO2 was uh, 76. And uh, so, there is hypoxia is there. Uh, and uh, FiO2? Uh, FiO2 will... So, it will be like around uh, 276 by 35. Uh, around 200. Like 21 plus uh, 5 liter means 5 into 3. So, okay. like that we will take the FI water. Uh, so, around 200 to 240 like that. Uh, so, hypoxia is there for the patient. But other parameters are uh, 7.43. Uh, uh, he's uh, tachyp mixer. Uh, uh, sir, electrolytes patient, uh, like um, sodium was uh, 132, potassium of 4.7, uh, other uh, like calcium, magnesium, everything was like within normal limits. Sir. Which is the most important electrolytes in a patient who is having pneumonia with diarrhea? Potassium, uh, uh, no, uh, like sodium so, because if atypical organism, uh, sodium, hypernatal. It is always organism. sodium, okay. Potassium, normally it will not be lost through the... Uh, stools yeah. mostly uh, produced vomiting. by like uh, uh, low potassium is seen in vomiting. Okay. But it is uh, severe diarrhea afterwards patient can die. Uh, so uh, this patient uh, uh, ABG was fine. Then we had asked for a, uh, like ECG. It was showing sinus tachycardia. So. And uh, chest X-ray was also done. Uh, it was showing uh, bilateral lower zone uh, opacity and uh, minimal uh, pleural effusion was also there bilaterally. Uh, then uh, other thing was uh, echo was showing good LV sir, bedside echo done was showing good LV. Uh, so uh, we had like at this point uh, or while putting candle we had taken samples for routine blood test and uh, so we went with the sample history and the uh, secondary survey. So uh, patient uh, like uh, has a history of COVID uh, infection uh, like in May 2021. Uh, and uh, like he is uh, uh, vaccinated against COVID. Second dose of COVID vaccine was taken around five months back. Uh, so uh, like uh, he is not alcoholic, uh, not non-smoker, no other uh, previous comorbidities. Uh, 
so uh, like basically at the end of uh, january 2022 he had uh, like a urti like episode later he was fine and uh, now like for the uh, seven days back the patient had a history of food intake from outside following which he developed three episodes of vomiting taken to hospital was uh, symptomatically uh, managed with antiemetics then later he developed fever and uh, was taken to another hospital where uh, like he was uh, found diagnosed to have a uti uh, because urine routine showing 20 to 25 pastels but no culture uh, reports or anything available and uh, he was referred from there to another hospital where he was uh, like uh, started to have breathlessness also associated with the fever and uh, myalgia was there and he also developed some erythematous rashes over the abdomen and elbows uh, the outside hospital he had elevated inflammatory markers like total uh, like crp was 221 total counts were elevated uh, and also some hyperbilirubinemia was there so they had uh, referred him here suspecting a multi organ dysfunction hyperbilirubinemia means which type of hyperbilirubinemia uh, sir it is uh, direct only uh, because 4.07 was the initial bilirubin here mm-hmm. and 3.06 was the uh, direct component sdot sgpt uh, sdot sgpt was uh, normal sir uh, 37.4 and 19.6 Uh, so uh, this was the history so uh, basically the patient had a history of uh, vomiting uh, lo- uh, with uh, like a loose stools and then a fever then breathlessness uh, so this was the history uh, so uh, like uh, we had done a, uh, uh, like uh, and coming to the system examination patient uh, like air entry was bilaterally equal and he had scattered crepitations with no wheeze uh, then uh, other system examinations uh, were within normal limit uh, then patient had some erythematous rashes over the elbows uh, but it was uh, uh, coming down like in the other hospital he told it was more uh, prominent but it was uh, coming down by the time he came here uh, other uh, systems uh, were all within uh, normal limits uh so uh, the uh, complete blood count uh, like uh, was showing a, a total count of 11850 uh, with a uh, neutrophil 87.7 percentage and uh, like lymphocyte of 7.6 uh, eosinophil of 1.78 uh, neutrophilic predominant and uh, like uh, hb was uh, 14.4 then a platelet was uh, 1 lakh uh, 17000 so some thrombocytopenia was also there uh, here and fine thrombocytopenia Uh, sir, uh, less than uh, one lakh. Less than one lakh is thrombocytopenia uh, by definition. Ah, uh, one lakh. Low platelet. One lakh uh, fifty thousand to one lakh it is low platelet, but definition is less than, less than, than one lakh. That you should remember mm. when we write uh, thrombocytopenia, it should be in the definition. Uh, then uh, he had a CRP of three not eight and a uh, procalcitonin of four point three six. uh then uh, other parameters like rft uh, urea was 41 creatinine of 1 uh bilirubin we have discussed uh, alkaline phosphate is 127 uh then uh, electrolytes uh, 132 versus sodium potassium and other electrolytes were within normal limits uh so um, uh, like uh, with uh, with this uh, like a uh, background history and all uh, we have a patient with a pneumonia uh it is like uh, a community acquired pneumonia uh, because there is no history of hospitalization or anything mm-hmm. two, three hospitals he sir uh, had, no? he had the breathlessness mm-hmm. in the hospital like not like he had after admission in the hospital he had the breathlessness he had the complaints while going to that other hospital okay. so uh, it is not like after 48 hours okay. of admission he developed this okay. so we can take it as a community right. acquired pneumonia uh, and uh, it is a severe pneumonia sir so basically we are uh, like uh, taking the scoring system for pneumonia uh, like we have certain scoring so one is a pneumonia severity index score it is a complex thing but we'll get the calculator so it is coming to around 100 points which is class 4 with uh, and patient request high hospitalization and icu care and other easy one is a curb 65 score where this patient respiratory rate more than 30 and uh, like blood pressure uh, like at some point it had gone to like 90 60 so it is less than 96 blood pressure also we take it is coming to 2 that also like warrants admission or other one scoring as a smart cope index uh, which will predict the uh, chance for uh, invasive ventilation and uh, inotropic supports for the patient so this patient uh, basically it was coming to around 7 uh, that is uh, requiring icu admission and 1 uh, in 3 risk for ventilation and uh, inotropic support so uh, based on all these things and also like we have the uh, um, American uh, Thoracic Society's IDSA uh, severity grading for uh, 
pneumonia mm -hmm. so that also like if a patient has uh, one of the two major criteria which is like an uh, septic shock or mechanical ventilation or three of the minor criteria that is uh, like a respiratory rate of more than 30 uh, like um, uh, po to fi of less than uh, 250 or like uh, leukopenia thrombocytopenia uh, uremia multilobular infiltrates hypothermia or hypotension anything is there that also will show a uh, this um, uh, severe pneumonia. So, this patient basically uh, ca fit into a category of a severe pneumonia. So, we admitted, uh, planned of admitting him to the uh, ICU, sir. What uh, are the reasons for community acquired pneumonia? Uh, causes. Causes are uh, like one is uh, bacterial, so uh, it can be uh, streptococcal, uh, it can be uh, uh, atypical organisms, uh, then uh, it can be because of uh, uh, staphylococcus. Uh, streptococcus, staphylococcus, atypical organisms. Okay, so then viruses can virus. be there. Uh, then uh, other thing is um, a hemophilus influenza, all those things can uh, present. Uh, Normally, predominantly it's a gram positive problem. Most of the community occurred pneumonias are gram positive organism and viral. Okay. Rarely it will become gram negative organism. That we should remember. Uh, so, uh uh, so this patient basically was suspecting community acquired pneumonia and it's a severe pneumonia requiring IP uh, in patient management. Uh, so uh, like we can... Is it lobar pneumonia, bronchial pneumonia? Uh, sir, uh, it, this pneumonia is bilateral involvement, sir. Uh, bilateral patchy infiltrates like appearance was there. Hmm. So it is like a bronchial pneumonia pattern, not a lobar pneumonia, sir. So bronchial pneumonia, what are the reasons community acquired bronchial pneumonias? Uh, it, uh, atypical pneumonia. Atypical organism. Viral pneumonia. Viral pneumonia. How do you differentiate viral pneumonia from a typical organism pneumonia? Uh, a typical pneumonia... Uh, Both are x-rays, they, they yes, look similar. Uh, a typical pneumonia uh, like uh, has uh, x-ray with some hilar lymphadenopathy all are like associated features then clinically uh, symptoms will be like other system extra pulmonary symptoms will be there. Uh, so viral so, pneumonia you develop fever, sore throat, third day, fourth day you develop breakfast. all bilateral extensive infiltrates, patient will be highly sick. Whereas in uh, community occurred Locking a typical pneumonia, pneumonia. Uh, yeah. mild symptom, mm -hmm. progressive symptoms, it takes some time. Then even after admission patient not high toxicity, they can have breathlessness, uh, tachypnea and all. Toxicity features are not, they have a typical presentation. Uh, so what others, is typical presentation? What is a typical presentation? Uh, uh, what is typical presentation? Uh, it Fever, cough and breathlessness would be typical. Atypical systemic involvement like Typical presentation, one more is there, that is Hemoptysis. Hemoptysis will be there in typical pneumonia. Uh, pneumonia. Okay. Uh, a typical other system involvements will what be like, other uh, one can be present with diarrhea, diarrhea. Uh, vomiting, then uh, skin lesions can be there, erythematous lesions, then, lesions. Uh, then uh, uh, electrolyte uh, hyponatrium will be there, hemolysis can be there. Hemolysis. Uh, so, uh, these so are the common atypical presentation. Then some patients can have encephalitis, other uh, altered features. Altered okay. Uh, so, uh, we had started him on, uh, like, uh, the, apart from the uh, supportive measures that is oxygenation, uh, then fluid, uh, the, all those things, we had started him on uh, antibiotics. Do so, you recommend NIV for this patient? Uh, sir, actually, his uh, breathlessness was coming down. He, uh, like, we had kept and reserved the NIV ready. Like, as a, uh, like if required, we have to initiate. But this patient didn't require an NIV, sir. So, we, uh, we had uh, arranged for the NIV and uh, had a plan of initiating if he what had are the requirements for an IV in ER? Uh, indications. indications. Uh, so one is like pulmonary edema. Uh, if the patient is uh, like uh, pneumonia with distress, hypoxia, uh, then uh, like basically PCP pneumonia and all NIV is warranted. Uh, then uh, like uh, in COPD exacerbation. So all these things are commonly uh, used indications. Uh, then uh, we had started him on uh, injection like uh, antibiotic uh, piperacillin tazobactam uh, 4.5 gram IV TID and uh, injection azithromycin 500 milligram uh, IV OD dose was started. Sir. You take uh, community acquired pneumonia yes. in ER, how do you start antibiotics? Uh, sir, uh, community acquired pneumonia if it is like for IP patients there is like severe... Sir, suppose you are discharging the patient uh, in ER, we can even discharge uh, the patient. If the uh, patient is stable enough to discharge, what is the antibiotic of choice? Uh, sir, uh, so it is like uh, that also if the patient has no comorbidities and no risk factor for uh, MRSA or Pseudomonas like 
we have to grade it into two. Mm-hmm. If it is no risk is there, we can uh, give us, uh, amoxicillin uh, or uh, we can go for a cephalosporin, cephalosporin or some oral cephalosporin. And if there is comor- uh, uh, comorbidities are there, we have to go for amoxicillin plus clavulanate. Uh, and along with that, we have to give uh, acetromycin or doxycycline. Or we can go for a single like fluoroquinolone, respiratory fluoroquinolone like levofloxacin. So Read foreign textbooks, so only one choice is there. Uh-huh. That is fluoroquinone. If community acquired pneumonia, their choice is fluoroquinones, mm-hmm. moxifloxacin or uh, levofloxacin. But in India, it is slightly different. We don't use fluoroquinone uh, flu- uh, as, as a first line uh-huh. because of TB. Otherwise, it's a very good drug. So, like you told, uh, augmented uh-huh. amoxicillin, clavulanic acid uh-huh. can be given 625 three times yeah, daily. Yeah. That is the ideal choice. And you told about doxycycline. Doxycycline, what is the coverage? Uh, that too, like atypical uh, organs and covers so almost organs. everything. Gram positive covers some gram negative atypical anaerobes. So it's a very good drug. You can try that. Then, uh, so uh, uh, what is the dose of doxycycline? Hundred milligram uh, BD. BD dose will be given. Hundred mm-hmm. BD for seven. loading dose. Ideal dose is two hundred milligram loading dose. Then hundred milligram OD is the dose. But uh, for convenience, we give hundred milligram BD. That is not a recommended mm-hmm. dose. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, then uh, other th- uh, Cetromycin ideally according to IDA standard for uh, discharging it is 500 milligram on day 1 and 250 milligram on day 2 to uh, 5. How many days you have to give? Uh, 5 uh, to 7 days sir. Hmm. For, for all pneumonia sir? Uh, for community pneumonia like uh, the OP patient. What is the duration of action, action of uh, uh, acetromycin? It is prolonged duration sir. Why? Uh, uh, local action is also there. Um, Intracellular accumulation is there. So, even if you stop the antibiotic, it will work. If you, That's why most of the acetromycin strips three. are available in three drugs. Three, three tablets. Tablet. That will act another five, six days. So, total duration will be seven days. So, you give three days, that will act for seven days. So, in a minimal OPD infection, you can just give three days. That is enough. But if you are admitting, it is entirely different. So, community acquired pneumonia, normal lungs, it has to be gram positive cocci. So, you give amoxicillin, amoxicillin, clavulanic acid, first generation cephalosporins, or acetromycin, doxycycline, anything is okay. But if there is a comorbidity like diabetes or lung diseases like an ILD or COPD. Then what is the choice? Uh, sir, uh, like that is uh, if the patient is requiring uh, uh, admission and all, it will be a combination like beta lactam mm-hmm. plus uh, uh, macrolide or beta lactam plus uh, uh, fluoroquinolone mm-hmm. like that. And if the patient has uh, he, uh, like a risk of MRSA, like previous uh, uh, positive for MRSA infection is there, or a patient is like alcoholic immunosuppressive, previous hospital. Common community occurred organism which infects your lung. If you have a pre-existing lung disease, Klebsiella, Klebsiella. Uh, then um, Pseudomonas, uh, they are all hospital acquired infection. It is not community acquired, it can be community acquired, but they generally they are hospital acquired. Klebsiella and H influenza and Moraxella, these are the two gram negative organisms which occurs from the community. So that's why in a community acquired pneumonia, in western countries it is only levofloxacin or moxifloxacin. But in India, we avoid that. We are not, and uh, we are not telling it is wrong practice. We are avoiding because it's a second line second TB drug. That's all. Uh, so, uh, like if it here also like community acquired I, uh, IP patient, if it is like non severe, like that combination uh, can, uh, of beta lac- of? beta lactam plus a macrolide. That is uh, like ampicillin. I V like uh, preferred in according to IDSA and all is ampicillin or ceftriaxone uh, or. Uh, what is the basic difference between ampicillin and subtraxone? Ampicillin and subtraxone. 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 Uh, ambicillin sulbactam or ceftriaxone or cefotaxime uh, then plus acetromycin or doxycycline or we can go for fluoroquinolones okay. that is for uh, so non severe what is the action of fluoroquinolones then see oh, you are adding three drugs ambicillin sulbactam ceftriaxone 
അസിത്രമൈസിൻ ഓർ ഫ്ലൂറോക്കിനോൺസ് നോ സർ ആംബിസിലിൻ സൽബാക്ടം ഓർ സെഫ്ട്രാക്സോൺ പ്ലസ് അസിത്രമൈസിൻ ഓക്കെ സോ ആംബിസിലിൻ സൽബാക്ടം വിത്ത് സെഫ്ട്രാക്സോൺ വേഴ്സസ് നോ സർ ഈവർ ആം പ്ലസ് അസിത്രമൈസിൻ ഓർ ഓക്കെ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റുഡ് സെഫ്ട്രാക്സോൺ പ്ലസ് അസിത്രമൈസിൻ ആംബിസിലിൻ സൽബാക്ടം കവേഴ്സ് ബ്രോത്ത് ഗ്രാം പോസിറ്റീവ് ഗ്രാം ഗ്രാം നെഗറ്റീവ് അസിത്രമൈസിൻ അസിത്രമൈസിൻ അറ്റിപിക്കൽ കവേഴ്സ് ബോഡീസ് കവറേജ് ഓഫ് കിനോലോൺസ് ഇറ്റ് വിൽ കവർ ലൈക് ബോത്ത് ദി അറ്റിപിക്കൽ ആൻഡ് ദിസ് തിങ് സർ Uh, covers everything. Uh, gram, gram negative. Gram positive, gram negative, typical anaerobes. Almost everything it will cover. That's why it's it a true single... broad spectrum antibiotic. Okay. You should not misuse it, but uh, it can cover everything. Uh, but pseudomonas? Uh, if pseudomonas coverage, we should like give if we are uh, suspecting it. Like other uh, history of uh, immunocompromise or previous history of pseudomonas, all these things. Like Then we can like go for a piperacillin tazobactam uh, or like uh, meropenem, like imipenems uh, or uh, pseudomonas, say if it... Pseudomonas, how do you treat? Uh, if, if you have proven pseudomonas or you... suspect pseudomonas what is antibiotic coverage so basically two antibiotics should be given uh, covering the, having the gram negative coverage with the pseudomonal coverage that is either this present azobactam meropen all these things is it plus the gen- triple coverage plus the gentamicin or amikacin normally it is a triple coverage in severe infection like this this according to you it's a severe pneumonia oh. okay so if if it is pseudomonas due to any reason then triple coverage is ideal uh, treatment or if the patient is stable like you told double coverage uh, what is a double coverage uh, so like is if suspecting pseudomonas uh, like uh, we have to add on uh, this gentamicin or amikacin also like uh, piperas uh, meropenem or uh, cefepem salbactam all those things plus gentamicin amikacin uh, like that a two gram negative coverage antibiotic should be there okay. Uh, then uh, if suspecting like mrsa we have to add like vancomycin or linosol how do you suspect mrsa what uh, type of pneumonia we suspect mrsa uh, if it is like hospital uh, acquired uh, hospital, hospital, hospital acquired acquired pneumonia acquired. anyway we will cover mrsa then, but um, any feature in the x-ray will tell you that it is staphylococcal pneumonia pneumonia like nematocele uh, okay, multiple nematocele uh, nematocele uh, nematocele uh, multiple nematocils or multiple activity complex in the lungs we should think about mrsa but what we see routinely in our icu mrsa just like another uh, infection okay uh, so there like uh, vanco and linosolid and basically according to every guideline we will have to like deescalate if all these are proven negative okay. like with all these are empirical thing so if you are getting a culture positivity so report what antibiotic you have started for this this patient plan? was started on piperacillin tazobactam and azithromycin sir Uh, so basically uh, from other hospital he came uh, so we had started him on piptas and azithromycin and uh, even like uh, because of that only piptas always septraxone and azithromycin was okay. enough if it was he was just coming from the community uh, and uh, like with uh, piptas 4.5 g iv tid dose mm-hmm. and azithromycin 500 mg iv od dose okay. basically when you get a community acquired pneumonia like this gram positive coverage has to be there mm-hmm. So in this you are you are telling about ceftriaxone with acetromycin will it cover gram positive cocci uh ideally so like ceftriaxone has more gram negative coverage so an augment you know something can no, it will be. cover ceftriaxone has got some coverage acetromycin also got some coverage but it doesn't cover like you are uh, uh, augmenting okay. okay so if you are suspecting community acquired pneumonia it is always better to cover the patient with uh, gram positive coverage drugs like augmentin or uh, ampicillin cell back from first gen- generation cephalosporin that, that has to be there third generation cephalosporin the problem is they negative. covers mainly gram negative acetromycin coverage is good but in a sepsis patient it may not be very useful uh, and uh, in this patient apart from the routine uh, test what we have done uh, we had also like since we had a strong suspicion of atypical pneumonia we had gone for an uh, immunofluorescent assay test of uh, why did you atypical. suspect atypical pneumonia sir he had uh, like one is the vomiting diarrhea all those complaints were there then uh, he had some lesions uh, over the skin bilateral involvement and uh, though like uh, he was not very septic or toxic sir okay. uh, though he had tachypnea and some desaturation he was like not very toxic high degree fever toxicity nothing no uh, our temperature was like 100.6 like like okay. that sir. not more than 103 or anything okay. sir 
So, uh, since we had suspected that we had done a uh, immunofluorescent assay test of uh, atypical pa uh, panel, hmm. so that showed positive for Legionella. Oh. Uh, so, we had continued the uh, what is Legionella? Uh, sir, it's, it is an atypical organism. Uh, mostly, it uh, happens from like stagnant water sources and all. Uh, water uh, uh, AC coolers uh, or like any new plumbing happening in house or anything. Okay. So, uh, those are the sources for Legionella. Uh, and uh, Legionella is like uh, among the typical organism, it is a more, more uh, problematic one. Hmm. Like more symptoms happens with Legionella. Uh, patient will become very toxic uh, later after some, later it's a problem uh, so uh, like this was the basic management like uh, supportive care antibiotics mm. uh, and uh, like niv sos but he didn't require a niv or other okay let me expand a few anything uh, his uh, like sodium was 132 sir but uh, that was uh, like later on improved sir, with fluids and all those things it got improved uh, other electrolytes were within normal limits. Why sir. sodium is low in uh, the typical pneumonia? Uh, SAD, it's SAD. like picture. It's a part like of uh, infection. A patient is developing SAD, like picture. How do you prove it? Uh, then the workup should. Uh, SAD, it's like then we have to go uh, go for the workup for Why SAD. Why the treatment happens that results? You have to ask for urine sodium. Uh, so workup. Urine sodium and, and urine. Urine sodium will be? Urine is more, more than 40. More than? 40. 15. More than 40. 40. 20 is normal. More than 40 indicates that this patient is having SAS. significant loss of loss. sodium through kidneys even when the patient is having loss of sodium. So that is very important. Uh, if you want to make a diagnosis, you have to do it. Uh, this SADH, but this patient sodium actually improved. Actually, we had hydrated him. But if SAD is treatment would be different, okay. but here like he, we hydrated him and it got improved. Sir. Okay. And uh, later like the first day the bilirubin and all were uh, elevated, but on subsequent days it everything like had come down to normal. Uh, his platelet count also like had uh, come up to uh, three lakh eighty seven thousand mm. at the time of like discharge. Mm. So other parameters all were like coming down and patient clinically improved mm. in uh, four to five days. What advice you will give to the patient on discharge? Mm. Breathing exercise. No, uh, uh, like AC. Generally, yeah. pneumonia is not a common infection. AC and like source so should be. You have to find out the source. What is it, where he 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 lives in a uh, close rooms. He is staying at a, in a hotel. Like that, you have to ask the history. Some patients can have repeated attacks. Or somebody who is uh, staying in the same place, and because it's a closed circuit, it is a closed circuit. Every room will have same children, and you get uh, infection everywhere. So many patients from same hotel can develop, Legion. or same, same. Uh, uh, area can develop Legionella. So we should be very careful. We should warn the patient that this can uh, again happen, or this can occur to other persons. What's the usual test which is recommended for detecting Legionella? Sir, a uh, urine Legionella test is there, uh, like that can be done. Uh, then other PCR, PCR tests are also there. So Will it be picked up in grams, grams smear? No, sir. It is an intracellular parasite, so it won't be seen in gram smear. Then, uh, I mean, here we uh, told about X-ray. So, what is the role of CT scan in, uh, I mean, treatment or diagnosis of pneumonia? Uh, when do you do it, or is it really needed in all pneumonias? CT scan, uh, basically, like uh, if we have uh, any complications, like um, other, like we have to rule out that we, um, not no, in a typical and it's not very much warranted, sir. Uh, like, or is it suspecting any structural abnormality in a patient? Uh, any congenital abnormality, cystic fibrosis, or anything on those lines, or bronchic tests, complications like that. In that sense, you can do. Otherwise, it's not treatingly warranted. Only non resolving pneumonias you will need. Okay. We're not responding to treatment okay. and things like that. Fine. And uh, bronchoscopy? Uh, he, uh, like here we got the diagnosis and it's not warranted. Like if you are uh, uh, suspecting some obstruction leading to a pneumonia and all for therapeutic like that we can go. And if the patient is not expectorating, we uh, like not getting a sample, we can go for a bronchoscopy uh, f uh, for a diagnostic measure. That if like patient is on ventilator and all, we can go for that. Uh, otherwise like if the patient is uh, clinically improving uh, with the therapy, it's not uh, like very much... Uh, What's the drug of choice for treating Legionella? 
സാർ ബേസിക്കലി മാക്രോലൈറ്റ്സ് ആസിഡ്രോമൈസിൻ ഡോക്സിസൈക്ലിൻ ക്ലാരത്രോമൈസിൻ സർ ലീജൺ ഇറ്റ്സ് ലൈക്ക് ലോങ് ആൻഡ് ഡ്യൂറേഷൻ ഷുഡ് ബി ഗിവൺ സെവൻ ടു ഫോർട്ടീൻ ഡേയ്സ് വി ഹാവ് ടു ഗിവ് റോൾ ഓഫ് ഫിസിയോതെറാപ്പി ന്യൂമോണിയ സർ ദിസ് ലൈക്ക് ഇഫ് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഇസ് ഹാവിങ് ആക്ടലക്ടേസിസ് ഓർ സംതിങ് കൊളാബ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ബിക്കോസ് ഓഫ് എഫ്യൂഷൻ ഓൺ ന്യൂമോണിയ ദെൻ ലൈക്ക് ചെസ്റ്റ് ഫിസിയോതെറാപ്പി ദെൻ ഇൻസെൻറ്റീവ് സ്പൈറോമെട്രി ടു ഇൻക്രീസ് ദി ഫങ്ഷണൽ കപ്പാസിറ്റി ക്യാൻ ബി ഗിവൺ ഓൺലി ഇഫ് ദാറ്റ് എസ് പി സി എവറി തിങ് ഇസ് ഗിവൺ റെസൊല്യൂഷൻ വിൽ ഹാപ്പൻ ലൈക്ക് ഓൾസോ ലൈക്ക് ദ സെയിം ആക്ഷൻ ഓൺലി സർ നോട്ട് റൊട്ടീൻലി വാറൻറ്റഡ് they will increase the problem okay. drying will be that uh, secretion dry mucolytics can be tried physiotherapy can be tried huh? if it's thick sputum no ah, it will uh, mucolytics should be given because you want to uh, bring out, bring out the sputum, sputum and remove the this one what are the stages of pneumonia uh, force hepatic great attack no initially uh, resolving great attack initially like there will be a suppurative thing then one the of the paper for emergency <laughs> medicine is basic <laughs> sciences <laughs> so uh, we should know no as uh, in the so suppurative uh, phase will be that the stage of congestion con- uh, stage con- of red hepatitis red hepatitis gray, gray hepatitis gray hepatitis cancer resolution so stage of congestion what si- findings you get crepitations you don't get anything nothing findings. will be there nothing uh-huh. red and gray hepatitis you uh-huh. see what all signs Inspiring. given in books Inspiring. like bronchial breath sound all these things you get resolution you get crepitation so what stage this patient will come to you resolution so patient is having resolution that stage is coming he got lot of crepitation what type of pneumonia it is anatomically what are types of pneumonia sir there bronchopneumonia lobar pneumonia bronchopneumonia then interstitial what type of pneumonia is this this is interstitial pneumonia this is mostly interstitial pneumonia what is how do you clinically diagnose interstitial pneumonia from bronchopneumonia is it possible interstitial pneumonia means interstitium is involved your bronchus is not involved so you don't get much of uh, cough sputum production nothing will be there okay sputum production is more and same type of picture you are seeing then it is mostly bronchopneumonia sputum production is less less findings then it is mostly mostly interstitial pneumonia so both can have hypoxemia but interstitial pneumonia clinically will have more hypoxemia because exchange of gas is not occurring there okay which one uh, ni will be more effective uh, interstitial bronchopneumonia so even if you give ni oh, interstitial pneumonia exchange will not happen whereas in bronchopneumonia the once you displace the secretions from the lung it is like pulmonary edema you just displace it so that you get more space to breathe okay whatever it is we have to try and see whether the patient improves with niv or not okay theory theory is different from practical okay okay thank you okay.